Hey, what's up everybody? So I've got a customer who wants to run four 8 ohm cabinets out of his amplifier, but the problem is that amp and most guitar amps do not have 2 ohm output taps. Traditionally, if you were to connect four 8 ohm cabinets in parallel, that's going to equal a 2 ohm load. So bear with me for a second. The solution is very simple, but it might be a little confusing. What we can do is we can build a little box that'll place each cabinet in series with each other. So two 8 ohm cabinets in series is going to make a 16 ohm load. Therefore, if you have two 16 ohm loads in parallel, that would equal eight. These boxes are going to allow the client to run four 8 ohm cabinets out of the 8 ohm tab from their amplifier. Let's hop on the computer real quick and I can show you a diagram that might make this a little easier to understand. Take a look at these examples here. On the left is a standard diagram of how a 4x12 speaker cabinet is wired in series parallel. Some cabinets may utilize parallel series, but the end result is the same in either case. It's easier to follow this on a schematic, so to the immediate right is the exact same series parallel configuration, only now the speaker symbols have been replaced with resistors. To understand why this matters, we need to look here. Two 8 ohm resistors wired together in parallel will yield a 4 ohm load. In looking at this next example, we see two 8 ohm resistors in series, which yields a 16 ohm load. The total impedance is going to change whether the components are wired together in series or in parallel. In order to get four 8 ohm cabinets to work together to make an 8 ohm total load, first we must place each pair of cabinets in series with each other before we connect them together again at the amplifier output jack. What we will ultimately end up with is like the two diagrams on the left here. If you take these speaker symbols out and replace them with cabinets, this is exactly the same wiring scheme we are going to be utilizing. I went ahead and ordered some blank aluminum boxes that I can outfit with a couple of jacks to make this all work. I've already gone and measured the jack spacing to make them work and let's go ahead and drill these out and get this thing put together. Don't do that without advice. Putting these together is actually pretty simple but you're going to want to make sure that you use some type of insulator here to keep the jack from actually touching any of the steel or the aluminum in the chassis. Now when you mount the two that are close together, what we'll do is you'll take the sleeve from one side and have it touch what will be the tip connection for the other side. Just like that. We'll actually just put a very short piece of wire in between those two. Testing this connection, making sure there's no way that the uh, end of this can touch. Now let's see if we can bridge these two together. 14 or 16 gauge bus wire would be fine. For stability, I'm going to go ahead and just use a short piece of 14. You're going to use some short 14 gauge wire. So the way the signal is going to run is it's going to leave the amplifier through this, through the tip of the jack here. It's going to follow the red wire through the tip of the next jack. It's going to go completely through that cabinet, come back. Then it's going to go in series with the other cabinet. It's going to go through that cabinet all the way. And the signal is going to come back through this black wire back to the amplifier. So therefore, it's going to put two cabinets in series with each other. Let's go ahead and wire up the uh, second one. I decided to do this one just a little bit different. I didn't twist the wires. I mean, it was kind of unnecessary at either one. I just really was curious to see which one looked better. There we go. That's both of them. Now we'll make sure we have no continuity between the tip and the sleeve and also the chassis because that would not be good. It's 
So here we're going to go ahead and test the first box. Now I don't have any 4 or 8 ohm cabinets right here in the shop with me. I do have some out in the uh, studio, but it doesn't matter because it's all going to work the same way. So right now I've got two 16 ohm Marshall cabs hooked up to here. And that means two 16 ohm cabinets in series means we should probably get something like 32 ohms on the other side. So go ahead and use my multimeter here. And I've got 28 ohms, which should be about right. You, with a cabinet full of G12 T75s, you'll see anywhere from 13.4 to 14.3 ohms. And uh, well, that makes sense that I've got 28 ohms there. And this is just connected to another Marshall cab. And I've got 14 ohms on that cabinet. This one, We're about 13.6. Let's go ahead and plug them both in. And with both together, we have 28 ohms, which is good. So we should have 16. And 16 in series, we should get 32 on the other side. Like I said, that's impedance, that's not resistance. So each speaker will never, it says it's a 16 ohm speaker, but it's never going to read 16 ohms. It's always going to read something slightly lower. So the fact that we're getting 28 here with these two plugged in in series means everything's working like it should.